During his reign of terror, Jack the Ripper was known as the Whitechapel murderer, but his true identity remains a mystery. Historians and amateur sleuths have spent decades searching for the real Ripper, but they can't agree on the number of killings or where they occurred. The destruction of investigative records during World War II has limited modern-day researchers, but new and bizarre theories about the Ripper's identity continue to emerge, including claims that Lewis Carroll or a member of the royal family could be the infamous killer. In the teeming slums of Whitechapel, London, in the 1880s, poverty, vice, and crime were rampant. With over a thousand prostitutes working in the area, clashes between Britons and immigrants occurred frequently. In this chaotic and dangerous environment, the horrifying murders of Jack the Ripper began with the killing of a prostitute named Mary Ann Nichols. As the number of murders increased, the police were left baffled. The first victim, Mary Ann Nichols, did not initially grab much attention, but when another woman was found with the same throat slashes and partially eviscerated, the press took notice. Chief Inspector Donald Swanson took charge of the investigation, and the press dubbed the crimes as the Leather Apron Murders, while the police referred to them as the Whitechapel Murders. The bodies of two more women were found, one with her throat cut and the other severely mutilated. The police surgeon estimated that it would have taken the killer at least five minutes to inflict such injuries. Finally, on November 9, 1888, Mary Jane Kelly was discovered completely mutilated, with her internal organs spread across the room and her heart missing. These five murders are considered the canonical murders attributed to Jack the Ripper, but were they truly his doing? Before and after the infamous five murders attributed to Jack the Ripper, there were additional killings in the Whitechapel and Spitalfields neighborhoods. Some experts believe that these murders were also committed by Jack, while others claim he may have fled to the United States to continue his gruesome spree. The Metropolitan Police, however, have officially attributed the canonical murders to Jack the Ripper, and despite interviewing over 2,000 people and detaining more than 80 suspects, they were unable to charge anyone due to lack of evidence. The police surgeon, Thomas Bond, believed that the killer had some knowledge of anatomy and surgical procedures, but stated that he lacked the technical knowledge of a butcher or slaughterer, contrary to popular speculation. The killer was initially referred to as Leather Apron, a name that was sensationalized by the media. Despite the arrest of a man known as Leather Apron, later identified as John Pizer, he was eventually released due to lack of evidence. However, the press continued to associate the name Leather Apron with the killer until the more infamous name Jack the Ripper emerged. During the Ripper investigation, the police and press received numerous letters, most of which turned out to be hoaxes. One letter, addressed to Dear Boss, caught their attention when it mentioned slicing off an ear from the killer's next victim, coinciding with the discovery of Catherine Edo's body. Another letter, signed Saucy Jackie, referred to the double murders of Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes as a double event, solidifying the term in Ripper lore. The most infamous letter, known as From Hell, was not sent to the authorities but instead received by the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee along with a portion of a human kidney. The Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, led by George Lusk, hired unemployed workers to patrol the area with police whistles and cudgels. Lusk received numerous threatening letters, including the famous From Hell letter, but its authenticity remains a subject of debate among investigators and ripperologists. The authenticity of several ripper letters, initially believed to be genuine, were later exposed as hoaxes. 
Despite doubts from senior police officials, Scotland Yard distributed handbills of the Dear Boss letter in the hopes of identifying a suspect. It was revealed years later that journalist Tom Bullen was the likely author of the letter, potentially inspired by the legendary spring Heel Jack. The Dear Boss letter mysteriously vanished from Scotland Yard's files after the investigation, only to resurface in 1987, sparking ongoing debates among Ripperologists about its authenticity and the true identity of Jack the Ripper. The Ripper investigation was taken on by Scotland Yard, who conducted a thorough investigation into several murders in Whitechapel and Spitalfields from 1888 to 1891. Eleven murders were part of the investigation, with five being attributed to Jack the Ripper due to their proximity and timing, leading the police to believe the killer resided in or near the Whitechapel area. Inspector Frederick Aberline, who possessed expertise and knowledge of Whitechapel, played a crucial role in coordinating the investigation and resisting pressure to make an arrest based on public opinion rather than evidence. Some Ripperologists even speculate that Aberline himself could have been Jack the Ripper. During the Ripper investigations, the press and amateurs speculated openly about Jack the Ripper's identity. Suspects were leaked and convicted in the court of public opinion, leading to widespread anti-Semitic activity in Whitechapel. The press continued to present suspects even after the police had dismissed them, and to this day, the identity of the Ripper remains a mystery with no consensus ever reached. The theory emerged that the police knew the identity of Jack the Ripper and higher-ups in the government covered it up, with various reasons depending on the theorist's determination of the killer's identity. Some theories suggest that Queen Victoria's nephew, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale, committed the crimes with the help of his coachman, while another theory contends that the royal family sent a surgeon, Dr. William Gull, to dispose of the victims who were blackmailing them. However, the deliberate suppression of the killer's identity by the police and government remains doubtful, as does a connection to the royal family. The theory that Prince Albert, Duke of Clarence and Avondale was Jack the Ripper emerged in 1962. Despite evidence placing him in Scotland during the murders, the theory remains popular among Ripperologists and in Hollywood, although it is almost certainly not true. Dr. Sir William Gull, a renowned physician and scientist, was wrongly accused of being Jack the Ripper. Despite baseless speculation, there is little evidence to support this theory and much that clears his name. However, the scandalous and conspiratorial nature of the accusation ensures its popularity among those who crave a juicy story. Another suspect with a potential link to the royal family is Willie Clarkson, a wig maker who provided costumes and wigs to the palace. Although there is no evidence that he produced costumes for the Whitechapel murderer or the police, his connection to the royal family makes him an intriguing suspect. Another theory suggests that Princess Beatrice's personal obstetrician, Dr. Sir John Williams, may have been Jack the Ripper, with some speculating that the murders were part of his scientific research on infertility in women. While there is no contemporaneous evidence to support this theory, it is worth noting that Inspector Frederick Aberline considered the possibility of the killer being a woman. Speculation arose suggesting that the influential artist Walter Sickert may have been Jack the Ripper, as he once resided in lodgings claimed to have been occupied by the killer. However, no evidence establishes his involvement and the DNA comparisons between the Ripper's letters and Sickert's writings are inconclusive due to the letters being handled by numerous investigators and dismissed as hoaxes by many. Sir Melville McNagton, 
chief constable and head of Scotland Yard's Criminal Investigation Division, created the canonical five victims attributed to Jack the Ripper in his 1894 report. He named three suspects, including Montague John Druitt, whom he claimed was the prime suspect and believed the murder stopped when Druitt committed suicide. However, the lead investigator on the ground, Frederick Aberline, dismissed Druitt as a suspect, and another suspect named Severin Klosowski was considered by Aberline to be the prime suspect instead. Investigators believe that Kosminski, a Polish barber who was incarcerated in an insane asylum after threatening a woman with a knife, could be Jack the Ripper. However, there was disagreement among officials, with one eyewitness refusing to testify against a fellow Polish Jew and DNA evidence linking Kosminski to the murders being disputed. During the investigation, a Polish man named Severin Klosowski came under suspicion by the police. He had a history of violence towards women, including his wives whom he poisoned to death. Although there is limited physical evidence linking him to the Whitechapel murders, Klosowski was convicted and hanged for his other known killings in 1903. Frederick Deeming, a notorious scam artist and murderer, falsely claimed to be Jack the Ripper. Despite his claims, investigations proved that he was not in London during the time of the Whitechapel murders, but some still consider him a potential suspect due to his heinous crimes. The number of murders attributed to Jack the Ripper remains a topic of debate, with some believing he killed only five victims while others argue for three. The question of whether the Ripper was responsible for the murders that occurred before and after the canonical five also remains unanswered. The motives behind the killings are equally elusive, with conflicting opinions on whether they were sexually motivated. Despite advancements in DNA evidence and criminal profiling, Disputes among experts and unresolved discrepancies continue to prevent a definitive identification of Jack the Ripper. The infamous Jack the Ripper as we know him today was largely a creation of the sensationalist press in late 19th century London. The case of the Whitechapel murders became increasingly sensationalized with each retelling, fueled by speculation, fear-mongering, and gruesome details. The failure to officially identify Jack the Ripper has led to a thriving industry of books and theories, but to this day his true identity remains a mystery.